The Quick Diz Takes podcast is a Quick Diz Takes production. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. Oh boy. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Quick Diz Takes Podcast, episode number 66. I am your host, Tim LeBeau, alongside Mr. John Castano. Hello. Mr. Stephen Lanzi. Good day. And last but never least, Mrs. Sarah Castano. Hey, howdy, hey. So it's been a while, guys, since we've uh, had the what I'm now calling, by the way, and this is by no way, shape, or form a rip off of anything else you ever heard in your life calling us the fab four this is like the core group of our podcast and um you know why not i don't don't have anything else clever you know so that's what i'm going with and uh yeah so all you guys out there that you know listening you've obviously kind of noticed that we've been breaking these episodes up with the four of us and then there's interviews and that's going to continue we have i'm not giving anything away but we have a guest that Sarah was able to secure that I am very excited about that will not reveal who it is. That was Johnny's suggestion. At Johnny's suggestion. I'm not going to reveal who it is yet. And I'm going to tease this, but I'm not promising this, but I am in potentially going to have another big guest from a Disney film in the early 90s that may or may not have been themed around Halloween. Anyway, we'll see. But today, let's focus on today. Today, we will talk our favorite restaurants in Hollywood Studios. We'll sit down and quick service and then eliminate another attraction in our ongoing. And when I say ongoing, I mean ongoing, like four months (laughs) elimination uh, series. And then we'll put Christopher Lloyd, um, I think upon Lansy's request, I believe, Christopher Lloyd um, in a Disney park. So, without further ado, uh, let's start with Steven. Steven's got a new computer. He's he's in a hotel. Let's see what he's got for his favorite. um, Let's do them both. Sit down and quick service at Hollywood Studios. Uh, Well, thank you. Um, Like I said, new computer, so it is good to actually, you know, be able to move in real time. Uh, Not I think rather than get lagged. So, favorite restaurant, sit down. This may sound a little boring, but I really like the Tune In Lounge. I gotta be honest; it's, it's so it's, it's right next to where they do like the character breakfast, which I love. But it, it, to me, I like the lounge because it's bar seating. It's not as packed as typical restaurants. Um, the beer battered. Uh, Onion rings are amazing. Uh, the drinks are really good. The French, I just, I like the food. I like that's just a, like a bar setting and you kind of get like a little break from just the mass of humanity. So I like the Tuna Lounge. It's, it's, it's a different vibe. It was between that or the Sci-Fi Diner. But in, in the end, I went with the Tuna in just because the, the Sci-Fi Diner has the same kind of commercial thing. So after a while, it just gets like, I'd rather just watch one of these, these movies. Yes. I you know, like that's, just, the, that's the one downfall of that restaurant is they should do a little bit more with what they put on the screen. Yeah. And so in, in tune in, I like, cause you still get the vibe. It's still like the fifties TV thing. It's attached to the main restaurant. It just gives you a little bit of space. So that's my favorite scene. Uh, as far as quick, uh, quick service. <sighs> You know, I I like the commissary, as odd as that may be. And the reason is because of where it is. Um, It's kind of, it's well-situated among certain rides, so you're not losing too much time. And honestly, during a vacation, because I know they have like the Mediterranean salad, amongst all all the ice cream and fried foods, and Mickey waffles, 
it's good to like mix in a salad a little bit in case your body forgot what a nutrient or vitamin was. Uh, <laughs> so it's just kind of nice to like, you know, not clog every artery on a vacation, at least give, you know, give one meal to being heart healthy and have just a Mediterranean salad. So that, that's where I am for my meals. Now that commissary, was that, was that where the, where the break was during the original backstage tour? Is that what they used for that? Does anybody know? Cause that's an older, that's an older yeah. quick service. No? It, it's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's right. Uh, like where ABC yeah, right, it is. I think it's, it's right over there. By the way, I don't know if, if it wasn't closed. My favorite quick service was going to be the old Writer's Shop Cafe. Okay, because I used to love that. For it had a like, good coffee. They had the uh, the carrot cake cookie. I was like, you know, that, so that for like a quick service, maybe you, I mean, you can sit down. But that would have been one of my answers, just because it was so non typical Disney. You know, you felt like you're in a cafe anywhere. Uh, but yeah, I think the commissary. I think you're correct as to what you. Okay, Johnny, what you got for us? Sit down is just the opposite. Well, not the opposite. The other side of the tune in lounge. I would go with the 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 prime time, the fifties prime time cafe, the actual restaurant of it. Um, I uh, like the uh, you know the whole fifties feel. Like you now, uh, I don't think kids nowadays would understand the 50s at least in our era we could watch the reruns of you know the old tv shows so we saw the whole 50s vibe of kitchens in the way you know moms ran the uh the households and kitchens on the, the old tv shows uh it's got all it does have the old tv shows playing on the tvs in there um the whole whatever room you're in usually you know three or four tables everybody you have the same waiter so the the, the you usually all sat at the same time and that waiter plays the whole um everybody you're all cousins so you know he introduces your table to all the other tables so you, it's more of like an interactive you interact with the other families you know you're not supposed to put your elbows on the table. You got to finish your vegetables, you know, clear your plates. And then you can always, somebody in the room always does something and the waiter calls it out. And then your table can interact with the other tables, kind of poking fun at them. And then uh, just the food in general, we usually get the, um, like the sampling of all the mom's classic um, food, I guess, because it's, you know, it's your mom in the, in the, in the, in the kitchen cooking the food and usually that's a decent value because you're splitting it's like you're splitting a meal you can split it with somebody else because you get um what do you get here you get i looked at the menu here where is it i did just have it no you get the fried chicken the the the, the pot roast and the meatloaf and then you know you get everything else extra with it and, you know, it's a good, it's, you know, you try a little, you, you try a little of the best of everything in there. And then the, um, you have to get a uh, peanut butter and jelly shake to, you know, go with your meal to make it all worth it. But uh, yeah, so that's my, that's, that's my uh, sit down. And then the uh, quick service is a newer one, which is, I don't know, I, 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 in, I think once, if you haven't eaten there, once you have eaten there, if it's not your favorite, I don't know. I don't really want to, I don't know. I don't think, I don't want to know you really at that point. It's the uh, Ronto Roasters. That Ronto wrap is just in, in Galaxy's Edge is just, I don't know. It's, 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 it, it, it's really, really good. It's wonderful. That, that basically, <laughs> that like, it's, it is really good. That pocket and bread thing. Eater. Yeah, I guess, and then you know you get the you get the piece of the, the 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 thin piece of pork, and then you get the I don't even know what it is. It's 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 like a, a sausage. Some sort of sausage. Is it a there's sausage? There's three. There's three. I don't even know that, right? what it is. There's a zesty slaw. I know that. Yeah, this the coleslaw is good in there, and then you get like that sausage over the middle of it. And it's just kind of it's a nice 
It's just nice handheld, very well traveled, traveling uh, little thing to eat. And I know this, I haven't tried the breakfast one, but supposedly the breakfast one's good too. But I don't Look know. Look at Johnny so, lit up talking about it's that. something I have that's to a, get that's a good. That's a good place. Ever, Ever since I've been there, since Galaxy's Edge has been open, it's my, I mean, I think it closes early, so you have to get it most, mainly, oh, well, I think you can still get it in Docking Bay 7, but that's my lunch every time I've gone, so. It's like Satuli Cantina, it's, it's, those two are probably the best, I just feel like value-wise, I don't know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, see, I know, yeah. I know it's like 12 or 13 bucks for it, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a. You feel full, know, like you feel to, pretty satisfied. But I would say like the size of the of like the pita is probably like the size of one of like the little the pizzas like you get those individual pizzas like that's the size of the the, the circular part of it but then everything yep. it's just i don't know it's really good and you, could, you, know, you just walk around galaxy of the so you, you don't have to actually sit anywhere and eat it so i'm gonna jump into i'm, I'm with sci-fi and um ronto as well but i'm gonna go I'm, I'm even though I want to take Ronto as well, it's my, it's also mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it like a one A. I'm gonna give a one A answer to this and uh, and go with if you ever had like kind of the finger foods and little offerings they ha- they have at uh, Olga's Cantina is also um, a pretty good deal. It's sort of sit down, I guess, because what does that yeah. fall? I don't know what that fall. Because yeah, I, I guess it would be. Because you have to have, I don't. It, yeah, it's it, kind of weird. <laughs> it's a it's a mixture of both because it's a hybrid. You have to have a reservation, but then like you can't get a meal, and they kind of want two out of there. You can't. I think you can only get two drinks if you want to have more than yes. one. Yes, and it's so it's yeah. It's like a it's like a it's a it's a hybrid. Because I went well the first time I ever went was with you. It was just us three, and then I went with later on later on that trip with. My brother-in-law and we get they have like a nice little selection of like i guess you'd call them like almost like pub style finger foods but they're if you get a few plates of it it's not a bad like i would consider quick service but also honorable mention to andy's lunchbox anyway uh sarah <laughs> um so i agree we also like the 50s primetime cafe but i was thinking since primetime's the, the food if you're looking for um you've got younger kids you're looking for to meet the Disney Junior characters. We do Hollywood and Vine for breakfast for the character breakfast. The food itself isn't anything like stellar and anything to write home about, but it's the only place that you can meet some of those characters. And so our little guy really likes Vampirina and that's the only place that we could find to meet him. Her, her, sorry. Um, So we do it more for the character interactions. They were really into Jake. That's the only place you could find Jake. So I picked that just because of, that's the only place you could interact with those guests. With COVID, it was a different situation. They took away the meet and greets they have outside um, the Disney Junior Dance Party, which is the only other way that you could meet them. And so it was just a nice way. You had a meal together and you get to meet all those characters. And of course, have ice cream during breakfast mm-hmm. because it's a buffet and the soft serve machines are on. So the machines on. Because who doesn't it. want to? <laughs> old country yeah. buffet, old OCB style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you got a waffle, if you got like a really thin waffle, you could just kind of have ice cream on a waffle mm-hmm. instead of a waffle cone. See? Is it me or, does, or do people just do funny things at buffets? Like like all of us. Every, I bet you everyone has their own little thing that they would never normally eat per se, but like because the buffet has a spread, you just kind of mix and match these things. Well, like I used to love here. I, and it's probably going to sound weird. And I, whatever. I used to love to take the chocolate pudding. And you know how they had the bananas that were like covered in like strawberry? Yeah, I would like mix those two up, and that would be like a, a big bowl of dessert for me. That's what I do. Sometimes a little bit of soft serve chocolate on top of that Chinese too. buffet. Top it all off. I would I would have a couple of plates, and then I'd go get a huge bowl of that pudding, that oh, chocolate I love pudding, the pudding, and the Jello, and oh yeah, just a little that, thing. Yeah. That's just a, a big. Things. That's a big helping of type two diabetes right there. By the by the way, okay. just really quick honorable mention. You, you mentioned an honorable mention. The baseline tap house. Oh yeah, yeah, that place is awesome. Really good. Oh, I mean, I the fact that I, when I walked in there, I like you feel like you're in a brewery in Massachusetts. Like you <laughs> just so I know they're not really big on food. They really only have like like maybe a pretzel or something. I they mean, have a charcuterie board. So to be fair, I've never gotten to the food part. <laughs> I've just kind of got to the beer. And I didn't progress, so I just kind of stopped at the beer. Um, but so I would, 
So it's tough to say if it's like a quick service because number one, you're not going to bring your kids there. No. Mm. Right. Or, well, you know, you could. Why not? Start them young. Why not? Well, we did. Well, I mean, if, we're, if you were like in Euro Disney. Yeah. It's like, or, mama sorry, needs your Land juice Paris. too. All right. <laughs> mama needs your juice too. No, you can't have this juice. Sounds like a big what? helping of cirrhosis of the liver, though. I don't know. <laughs> you guys serving up diabetes. Now he's serving up. <laughs> I Well, look, I mean, be- <laughs> with all the food, the arteries are going anyway. So at this point, complete system shut down. You no, know. It's a, I went there too. It's awesome. I went there last trip and just drank. Like, didn't even I went on one ride for like six hours at Hollywood Studios and spent like three hours at the <laughs> baseline top house. Not I, even, a, not even a joke. No, it, it's I maybe mean, the baseline tap house, very similar to the Rose and Crown, and that you go in for a drink, you start talking to other people, and before you know it, it's like yeah, yeah man. No, we, got a, <laughs> we got a fast pass that was three hours later when we got here but is now like here. Yeah. So um, so I just want to throw that out as like another, especially adults, you know, you know uh, tap house is a good choice. It's it's really good. Or you had a, pa- a fast pass that was three hours ago and you just let yeah. it go by. Just let but it you're feeling away. pretty good. So you're going to go see if you can, if you can talk yourself into the, yeah, go, the, yeah. the fast pass. You're going to get a li- <laughs> liquid confidence going. So <laughs> I, I was having a um, thing and, and, uh, yeah, I don't think this thing is working. <laughs> I guess if, I'll, I, will, I will throw, I hate to do this because I like the baseline tapas. The only thing I kind of don't like about it a little bit, but this is like a Disney thing in general, is if you go out, you get your flight or whatever, and you're like, oh, man, I want another round. I let the lines going around out there, you got to like, you know, get back in it. I mean, I get that in any restaurant bar situation, it might be that way, but the line can get long at times. But. Still worth it. The beer's good. Well, I do apologize for my my ignorance. I just haven't been to Disney since all the Star Wars, even though wearing the shirt. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I haven't been there since all that opened. So I haven't had the food that you guys were just mentioning, like that pita. Um, so yeah. when I go, when I go, I'm gonna have to make a list of all the Star Wars stuff. I, I gotta hit up. I'd be shocked if you didn't if you didn't like Ronto Roasters. I mean, that place is pretty solid. Well, you know, you won't have to twist my you won't you won't have to twist my arm to go try new food. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you get to see that, cool, that, that cool droid spinning the yeah. Plus, it's all themed out. Obviously, all I, it's I love really that cool. droid. Yeah, that that was a nice touch with the droid. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, it's that time. Please excuse me for a moment. Uh, Admit it, Lindsay, you've missed the soundboard. You're going to owe Michael Buffer a lot of money. <laughs> Johnny says that every time. Hmm. That would be my luck. Like, we, <laughs> like this podcast blows up, and then like all of a sudden I got Michael Buffer calling me. Flagged. It's a flagged video. Copyright. Yeah, they haven't flagged me yet. I, Posted I wonder, with a disclaimer, I do not own the rights to these sound clips. I wonder if he like, would sound like that if he ever called you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, hey. Pay my royalties or get ready to rumble. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let me just make sure I'm not I'm not gonna make my usual weekly weekly mistake of leaving the last two attractions we did on the on the wheel real quick. And I believe I have covered my my basis here. And I'm looking at this and I don't think there's really any e-tickets left. Well, here we go. Journey into imagination. Oh, so simple. Living yeah. with the land. We, yeah. Well, I mean, we're gonna do this, but we've had like we won't. We've almost sorted through this in previous episodes if you splice it all together. But wait, before we start, Lansy, have you seen or heard of the woman who left her ride vehicle of Living with the Land? I think it was like last week, week and a half ago. Have you seen this? I heard of. Something like I heard something. Um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't get to read the article. She lived so, the dream. <laughs> so essentially, she left the vehicle to steal a cucumber and then fell trying to get back into the vehicle, sprinted to Soren, and as she came off Soren, security was waiting to remove her. So she had a lot of time. That's what I get out of that. I mean, I just want to know how the cucumber was. 
I wonder if she got to eat it. I hope she handed it off to somebody else to save it. So she got it, at least got the at least throw it on the eBay cucumber out of it. But the All best right. part, Lindsay, was Universal's response and tweeted out a cucumber. I could see a churro, but a right. cucumber. We have. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, it is, it is the summer and this is the, you know, tomatoes from the garden. So you make the cucumber tomato with the balsamic kind of, you know, it's I, I, I can see her perspective. It's a very, All low, right. it's a very low calorie. So watching. Her yeah, it's a good, yep. good low calorie snack. Healthy snacks. I think this is going to be quick. And I mentioned at the top of the show, we have a lot of attractions left. So we may even do two today because I, I think this is, I think this is going to be quick. I'm not, and honestly, I'm just going to. The original Journey into Imagination was amazing. was one of my favorite all-time Disney rides. This one sucks. Living with the Land is Epcot's hidden gem, as you will see in one of my videos coming up very soon. <laughs> and that's my vote, Living with the Land. Uh, Johnny, go, you want to get in on this? Yeah, Living with the Land's probably, I mean, if it's, uh, if I have to sit down and think about it, it might be in my top five of all of Disney. Um, so it's going to take a lot to beat that for me. So, I mean... Even the I mean, even old imagination probably wouldn't beat it. So, yeah, living with the land. I'm so glad this is going to happen. I always I was always thinking to myself, if living with the land fell against the wrong attraction, though it could have been victimized. But it, it got itself a nice little match up here. It's going to cruise right into the park. Uh, Steven. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go living with the land because my view. Look, nothing against Figment, but my view is if you're going to have Figment, have them. First of all, give them a decent ride. Give them a much better ride. And again, it's no one knows who he is. So I I think with Disney Plus, you can, I think now is the time to make like a, at least a one uh, season series of Figment and see if it catches on. I mean, look, his voice is annoying, right? <laughs> he, you know, he gets in trouble with everything. It's, I mean, to me, that's perfect for kids because everything my nephews want to listen to, I want to like put on noise canceling headphones. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, I'm going to live with the land. I think it's very unique. It's off the typical beaten path of Disney. And uh, I'm a, yeah, I, I'm going to go with, I'm going with living uh, with the land. Sarah, do I even need to ask? I love me some figment, but he's nothing without the dream finder. Bring the dream finder back, but I'm still voting for living with the land. And let's get a lap bar so crazy Karens don't get off the boat. Love, Sarah. All right. Um, Just keep the managers on the ride with them so they don't have to go traveling to find them. That, that'll keep them right there. <laughs> you see, if you didn't cheap yeah. out, Disney, yep. and get rid of the, yep. get rid of the exactly. tour guides, you would have had someone there watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also... I've said it once, but I'm going to say it again. Upgrade the Imagination ride and put a Figment Dreamfinder show in that theater on the side because you can do so much with those two interacting with children and families. You're just missing a great opportunity and a way to bring life back to that side of the park in general. What's up, guys? It's Tim. Just here to remind you to check out our new website, quickdiztakes.com. We cover everything Disney, from our newest videos to our newest podcast, blog posts by contributors, and much more. And while you're there, do not forget to subscribe for the latest notifications on when new blog posts are post and new videos go up. Of course, check out our YouTube page, Quick Diz Takes, and our Facebook page, Quick Diz Takes, along with Twitter, at Quick Diz Takes. For me and at Palm Tree Scook for Sarah, Instagram at Quick Diz Takes Tim and at Quick Diz Scook. And of course, if you like this, please like, share, and subscribe with friends. Thanks for listening. And now back to the show. All right. Um, we're we're going to squeeze. I think we should squeeze one more in. Is, we're moving along quickly today. Let's do it. Um, Sarah, you're marking that down, I assume. Yep. Okay. And that way there, next episode, we will be down to the end. We were going fast until I... <laughs> slowed us down. Slowed it down. Jungle. Oh, Peter Pan. Oh, boy. I got a feeling it's going to be another easy one. <laughs> 
not big Peter Pan fans on this shit on this channel. Don't see the angle. Buzz Lightyear. Oh boy. I don't know if we could pick two. I'm, so I'm gonna start again. And I'm gonna say right off the bat, and Johnny's laughing because he already knows. I don't think you could pick two rides I could care less for more than those two. You know, it's nuts. Peter Pan's gonna. I'm gonna. Go, I'm, I'm actually gonna vote for Peter Pan. It's how much I hate Buzz Lightyear. No, man, I heaven. Get do we have to wait? Stipulation: Do we have to wait? Is the wait times factored into these? Or we just no, going? we're just talking about the ride itself. Yeah, I'm going Peter Pan. I can't stand Buzz Lightyear. I sit there with a laser gun shooting at cardboard cutouts. This is not a good time to me. So, Peter Pan for me. Uh, same rotation, Johnny. Yeah, I think the you get a better you if you're gonna play a ride with a game in it, you're getting the better Toy Story version on uh, Midway Mania, and it's just a like it's it's. It's a good concept, you know, to play a game in a ride, do something. Um, but yeah, um, and I'll go, to, I'm going to say Peter Pan too, but mainly for like, it wins overall for me for like the nostalgia factor too, just because of the, you know, how it, you know, the, the um, relates back to the whole Walt thing. And it was, you know, his, his vision in Disneyland and brought over here and then, I don't know, that, that doesn't really compare to Buzz Lightyear with the lasers. Yeah, it, it's like, it, it, this, is one, this is really one of those, like, just which one's worse. Like, not not they're both good, and which, and which one do I just prefer? Yeah. It's just like, which one is not as bad as the other one? Plus, Captain Hook's my favorite villain, so I'll go with that. And there you go. You get to ride the Jolly Roger, so. Yep. Couple, there you go. Couple winning things. Yep. And it's a classic. I, I could give it that. And if the wait, if it was a ten minute walk on, I go on all. I would go on every trip, no problem. It's just, yeah. it's just the wait that really makes it annoying to me. Yeah, the, the the hour wait is not worth the three minute ride or whatever it is. Uh, as much as I love Peter Pan, um, I don't really find flying over action figures to be the most wonderful, <laughs> interesting. Like some of it is like some of it is good. I mean, it's kind of very similar to the Winnie the Pooh ride, but it just every ounce of it shows its age. It just needs a reefer. Make it a little, I would say make it a little bit more like Winnie the Pooh if you're gonna do that style of ride. Um, but I now I'm going Buzz Lightyear because I I am usually with somebody, so it becomes like a you know, loser buys, you know, the drink the next round of drinks or something. And so it's competition. For, so it keeps my interest because I'm usually competing against somebody. I would never want to go alone, you know, for that reason. But yeah, like I've done it with people, I've, my friends I've been with, my brother, you know, we're, it's, it's, it's just competition with the lasers. So who gets the best score? So I'm going Buzz Lightyear. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Sarah. Do you enjoy playing Buzz Lightyear with Johnny? She did well, last time because she cheated and she, well, knew I, the, she knew where the high scoring ones were. I still do not know the high. He's just mad that I actually won. I don't particularly care for Peter Pan. It's kind of mm, if there weren't an option to get a fast pass for it, I wouldn't ever stand in that ride. That being said, I would not use a fast pass to go back on Peter Pan. So that's kind of a mm, moot point. At least Buzz Lightyear, my kids are, I don't know that excited by his word, but they're at least motivated to stand in that line for it. Um, Cause it's like a big ride on video game for them. So while I'm not necessarily super duper excited about either of them, I'm going to go with Buzz Lightyear, which brings us to a tie. It's a tie. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to have to ask Hamilton who he's promoting. Now um, it's up to the delegates. It's, yeah. We're going, we're going to the delegates on the, um, on Facebook. So we'll get back to you guys next week on that. I wonder how that, uh, I think it'll be an interesting one. We'll see. Um, as far as imagination goes, we'll give them the old. You are the weakest thing. Goodbye. Because I hate that ride. Um, all right. So it is time for our final. And I think I want to see, I'm very curious to see where everybody went with this. Because, you know, everyone's, I've noticed every week, everyone's trying to do their best to like not go with the obvious. But this one, I don't know. Can we shy away from it? We'll see. Impossible. So uh, 
if anyone that didn't hear me at the top of the show, we're doing Christopher Lloyd, aka Doc Brown. That's great, Scott. And um, so you shy away from it. Look what you just called him. <laughs> great, Scott. Johnny with his out of time license plate. Yeah. The case. Listen, I have I have the movie I'm tattooed on my body. That is true. No so one goes, well, it's, it's not. I mean, there is. All right. First of all, he's I could in, put him he's in, a, in an amusement park already. I could put him in a bunch. I, I mean, there, well, pretty, any of his movies, you could put him in anywhere. Yes, but the he character fits in quite well. Actually, maybe I'll change. I'll, I'm going to go last. I'm going to think about something. Maybe I'll switch this up. Let's start with Steven. Okay, so <clears throat> to your point, Christopher Lloyd is already in a theme park. I know that because I did his voice to the person pretending to be Christopher Lloyd at that particular theme park. He, and it was funny because he, he would <laughs> like, he had, like accent. I don't know if it was Australian or something, but he, got, he was trying to hide it as best he could. So, he, so he's like, you know, you want to take a picture? And I was like, oh, okay, let's take the picture. Uh, don't forget the flash. <laughs> you know, so sorry, I had to do that. Oh, I was waiting for it. <laughs> we missed you. Oh, so, waiting for it. <laughs> so the easiest one to do is obviously Back to the Future. It's already because it's his signature, you know, just to, just to see him go around asking people, Oh, why are they so heavy in the future? Is there something wrong with the Earth's gravitational pull? But I would say that there's also two more you can do for him. Number one is his character from Taxi. Third time on the show it's been brought up now. Because just that being, all right, so because, you know, Hollywood Studios, right? They have those, those, those dapper people and they're all doing the thing. So you already have people running around just acting random. So just have him go up to people and be like, oh, excuse me, what do you know? Hello, hello, light. <laughs> Slow down. I love that show. It's stupid. Okay. Show. What? <laughs> no. You know, and so that would get a lot of laughs. And the third thing is, his character from Roger Rabbit, because his whole point was to kill Toontown, right? Wait, man, just, it, it, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but is the, on that Roger Rabbit to, Toontown spin in Disneyland, is is that character in that ride? Just out of curiosity, anybody know? Out of curiosity? I don't think curiosity? so, but I'm, I'm not 100%, but okay. I think he I'm is. sorry, just curious. In Roger Rabbit, the movie is very unique because it had both Disney and Warner Brothers. Yeah, like it, yep. Sony had Mickey Mouse, you know, you know, because they all circled around it like, oh, who was that guy? Right. And <laughs> so, eh, I don't know. You know, so I think that that character, the villain, could be really interesting in Disney. I think, first of all, you could almost do a 3D ride. Right. With that with that Roger Rabbit theme of trying to destroy Toontown and in this case, Disney World, you could spin it. So. He's had a lot of great, so I would say, obviously, Back to the Future is the, and I know we're supposed to pick one, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. Whatever, it's too good. <laughs> so Back to the Future is the easiest one. His taxi is the other one as just a random character running around Hollywood Studios. And then I would say Rod, his character from Roger Rabbit, and because the kids are going to get interesting. Like, you tell the kids, if you see him, yell something at them, you know, and get the kids involved in it, too. So that's my answer. And he just continues, you know, the taxi references continue on this show. Some, it's the, you know, Stephen pointed out a few weeks ago, it's the most random thing. I don't think we're done. I think at some point or another, it's going to happen again. We'll, we're going to end up putting Tony Danza into a park or something, and it's going to resurface. But Andy Kaufman. Yep. Judd Thank Hirsch. <laughs> Whatever. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, Johnny, what do you got? I, I got a feeling I know what you have, but let's hear it. Well, the obvious one is he's he takes over dinosaur, and, and, and he's he's the doctor that leads you through dinosaur. Except, except you actually, if he was to take over, that'd be a you know a three hour ride because it'd be all kind of interdimensional thing. It'd be, it'd be it, um that's the car would stop. The car would stop working. Yeah, but the, um, when I was looking through. 
I mean, that's the obvious one. But the, uh, I was thinking now Disney owns Anastasia. And everybody's questioning, should Anastasia be a real princess? And he's the voice of Rasputin. So you yes! can make an Anastasia ride, bring her into the whole thing, and you oh, can Sarah's be the voice for Rasputin <laughs> in the ride. Bartok is the best. Man. Almost as excited as she was when she dominated you in Buzz Lightyear. But anyway, <laughs> twice? Oh, wow. She cheated. <laughs> she Googled. That's right. Gary beats me in Midway Mania. Um, so that's what you're going with, huh? Yeah, I figured I'd go with that. Because, uh, you know, ever since they bought Fox and all that stuff, that was the big question of, it, you know, bringing Anastasia in there. And I can bring that character in and... He's the, you know, he's the, 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 the villain of the, of the ride. Of Makes the, sense. You know, the story, the whatever dark ride they make out of it. Cause it obviously has to be a dark ride. I love the effort from all of us every week to try to stay away from the obvious answer. It's, yeah, it's good. It's good. Sarah, she's got the obvious answer, I think. No, but I'm very excited. I'm going to take his character from the Adams family. We're going to redo the haunted mansion and oh, he will be no. our narration. No, not oh my god. We've got some gems in there. Yeah, I mean it's things going around. Get this. But I also decided I know how much you hate, 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 loathe entirely the virtual queue to rise of the resistance. I've decided we're just going to put a small um dilapidated barn off to the side. And for those people who are curious enough to venture in, is going to enter a DeLorean. You are going to fast pass your way using the DeLorean and you're just going to come in with the flaming tire streaks into that room with all of the stormtroopers in it. Granted, you miss a lot of the story. And the, theming, what is you're doing and there. the theming is completely destroyed. You're putting Back to the Future and Star Wars in the same universe. Hey, it sounds like, ama- it sounds like an amazing combination to me. But it's the only way to get a fast pass. And it's not really a fast pass. You just have to know where it is. It's not going to show up on the map. Does he show up later on too? Well, you know when you're taking um, the train. Oh yeah, you don't take the train. Never mind. Never mind. You well, when you yeah, I got you. When you get back into where they dock your little yep, ride yep. vehicle, mm-hmm. he will be the one narrating. Oh my god, what have we done? You know, sorry, Lance, I don't do it as good as you do, but <laughs> you know, he'll kind of get you. Just just go back this way, they'll, and you like transport back the appropriate way. Johnny, what do you what do you feel about Back to the Back to the Future on Gal and Galaxy's Edge? It says you can cross times. He went to the Wild West. I don't like it. He could go to a galaxy far, far away. No. A long time ago. Long, long time ago. Back to the Future is in a world of its own. It's not being combined with anything else. Sorry. Mm. But it starts off a long time ago, and he's a time traveler. I mean, Jaws exists in the Back to the Future universe, so that's interesting. He was a Klingon. So if we're in outer space, you could do a Star Trek. Um, I don't know. A little off topic, but I did read that a couple met. Neither one spoke a common um, like national language. I think one spoke French and the other spoke like German or something, but they both knew Klingon. And that's how they communicated with each other during their courtship while they learned each other's languages. They eventually got married. Hmm. Was, so all those yep. Trekkies if out there. If this was not a family show, I'd have so many questions about that. <laughs> but by the way, there is one kind of idea that I don't think anyone had. Um, he well, was. Wait a minute, I got I, I got mine first. I don't I don't know if you're gonna I don't know if you're gonna steal my thunder. Probably not. But all right, I hate Dino Land. Everyone knows that excavation site needs a spruce up. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna offer free snacks, candy, water pistols. You know, you name it, anything that a kid could possibly dream of. Kids only inside, though. And we're going to take his character from Camp Nowhere, and we're going to put him in there, and he's going to watch the kids run amok. He's the babysitter. Huh? Amok, 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 amok. Amok, 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 amok. Yep. So, Stephen, if if that wasn't what you were going to say, then feel free to share your idea. (laughs) First of all, can we... How do I get that? I want that. That should be my ringtone. You want me to send it to you? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I can send it to you. Come on, come on. Like my family and I, like that's like just one of those things. Um, the, the other one I was going to say is he was Uncle Fester. Yes. And we have literally a haunted mansion in Disney. 
Haunted Mansion. Didn't Sarah say that earlier? Did you say that? You said that, right? Okay, sorry. I got a. I had to go pick somebody up later, so my attention like left for a second. Although I don't blame it. it happened to me that with the, one of our guests. I was he, he he picked the carousel as his favorite Disney ride, and when yeah. it was all done, I was like, "Yeah, I like the carousel of progress too." And he's like, um, "Not what I said." And he talked for like ten minutes about it. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, well, the best part was my choice was the carousel of progress, and I was like, "Thanks, Tim." I just couldn't yeah. wrap my head around someone saying j- picking the carousel. So that when I hear the word carousel, I automatically have to assume it's going to be the carousel of progress. Yeah, my, my my bad. I got a text that took my my attention away from it. So you, nah, you you're did, all good. You did choose Adam's family. I would approve the Adam's family if I were Disney CEO. I would approve the Adam's family idea with, on the one stipulation: MC Hammer's in the ballroom scene singing. Remember the Adam's family song he had? That yeah, happen, that would have to happen in there. That definitely have to happen. And we gotta put some money back in the man's pocket. You know, he had so much and he lost so much. And he had big pockets. And he had big pockets. And so, Disney's got a lot of money, so it works. I mean, <laughs> help the man out. Those are big pockets you gotta fill. He'll do it. He's too legit to quit, so he's gonna do too it. Legit. <laughs> too legit. Oh man, now Carrie and I need a dance session. Here we go. Anyway. Yeah. See, I got more still. I got more. Oh, Johnny's got more. Oh, wait, 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 there's you more. Bring, you got <laughs> ESPN uh, Wide World Sports. You bring, you let the angels do spring training there. Here you go. His character is the angel from K- angels in the outfield. That's their mask. He's got, he's got three spring people. training. God, I forget about that one. What else do I got? I got more. I guess still got more. Um, what was the other one? Oh, who else in that movie? Tony D'Angelo from Taxi. Anyway, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> you have a, you know, you set up a whatever park, or Epcot, because it's more adult park. You have the um, a baby, like a babysitting center. He's played mr wilson and dennis the menace he's the he's the uh babysitter of the children for uh oh i'm sorry he wasn't mr wilson never mind that was he walter matho no he was he was the bad he was the uh the, the bad kid guy that, the guy that kidnapped dennis the menace, Wicked creepy right. guy yeah he could you know he could, he could still be the babysitter he opens up cans of beans with a switchblade and uh feeds beans to the children while you're drinking around the world if you're comfortable leaving your children with a man like that hey, i say well. go for it and then I one I I didn't I I completely forgot to like sorry he was in that that awesome Hulk Hogan Suburban Commando movie he was the, yes the dad that was actually a good movie I don't know how you put the dad in there but I, that he maybe you get a two for one get Hulk Hogan and him that, how do you yeah. how do you get his character from one flew over the cuckoo's nest in there hmm because he was like a kind of a crazy well they were all crazy in that one but yeah. Maybe he could be an Easter egg. You just keep the text of one flute. You just kind of keep that somewhere hidden on a ride. Maybe. Just stick him in the Tower of Terror. Maybe once, you can stick him in the once, air. Once, I don't know. Once, you drink, the- <gasps> once, you, once you drink around the world, you go in a secret room and he's in there and you can go, you know, act crazy with him. You need drunken stuff. <laughs> you can put one flute <laughs> out of cookie. crazy with him. <laughs> yeah, you, you're drunk. You don't know what's going on. Hell's Castle. Well, Beast's Castle. You got to a clue. For Nurse Ratchet. What? Clue. Oh, yeah, it's right. It was in Clute. Haunted Mansion again. This guy could be, this guy could literally have a very, like, all his characters, like, spread out throughout the Haunted Mansion with MC Hammer in the middle. Well, if we're bringing back MC Hammer, then I, I say we also have to put a Ninja Turtle ride in just so we have an excuse to bring back Vanilla Ice. Go Ninja, yeah. Ninja, go, go Ninja. Which reminds me, I was thinking about this. We, we're going to have to switch the segment once in a while to, like, just taking a intellectual property random intellectual property and putting those in parks because it would be fun to do like ninja turtles for example or you know whatever you name it obviously got to pick the most ridiculous movies and scenarios just to make it good mm. i think we actually dabbled in that a little bit because i remember make I, did, I think i remember putting the office in tomorrowland at one point didn't we do something like that we themed a whole land okay but this would just be here's the property plop it somewhere yeah That'd yeah be- yeah, yeah. Be- i like that so stay tuned for that. Um, and I'm going to go back to an old tradition on the show. What um, celebrity before we go, we're we going to do next time. Who's got a, who's got a, an idea. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Fourth of July is coming up. Yep. Can we oh, theme this yeah. a little bit? Will Smith independence day. JK. Uh, oh, just Will, uh, Will Smith. He's been a lot. Nope. Yes. Jim Carrey. Can do Jim Carrey. Johnny. Johnny, any ideas? On this? Um, what's his face? Oh, jeez. Oh, that guy. No, I got an idea. This is perfect. I, let's I, skip I, the celebrity. I, let's skip the celebrity next time, and let's put Independence Day in the park. It's Fourth of July. 
think it's a perfect idea. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. I was just going to say, I was gonna say I was, it was all related. I was just didn't, didn't know his name off the top of my head. Quote was just saying Bill Pullman just because he was the president. I love Bill say. Pullman. Lone Star. Of, just couldn't come up with his name <laughs> quick enough. Ah, Cole never bothered me. <laughs> Him and Elsa. He should be dating Elsa. They'd be <laughs> Cole never bothered either one of them. All right. That's what we're going to do. Try it out. See how that works. Not bad we've, dreams. Aliens. We've got uh, aliens. Yeah. yeah with, with the government. At least well, the alien information. Johnny must be getting really scared. Yeah. Um, I am. <laughs> they're real, Johnny. And they're coming for you. <laughs> the truth is coming. Typically came here for you. No one else. <laughs> um, so next week or next, whenever we get together for the next episode of, of the, the original, you know, the Fab Four podcast, we have Star Tours, Nemo, and Jungle Cruise left, I believe. And maybe there's one I haven't thought of yet, so I'll, I'll, I'll think on that. But Oh, yeah, because we didn't do People Mover, so we'll get with that in there. But we're getting, we're getting to the end, so we're going to have to uh, move on from that very soon. Anyway, all right, guys. These people Mover should just move on. Not yeah, I know. The people mover. I know. How do you defeat the People Mover? Unless you put, I mean, and especially because we're not, there's nothing left to put it up against. Nothing and nothing on that list would be it. I don't think. I don't, even... I don't think so. I know. I see Sarah's wheels turning over there in the bottom corner. She's looking at her notebook. She knows. She's knowing. She's going to be texting me later on. You missed this one, and that's good because I don't remember which ones I missed because I am not a responsible podcast host or channel um, person, <laughs> whatever you call it. Um, all right, so we're out of here. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. I don't know if it'll be next week. Uh, actually, we're going to try to get... Oh, no, no, because next week's 4th of July, so probably not going to have an episode of the Fab Four next week. We have... Um, actually, we have your episode, uh, Craig, Craig from... Yeah. Beyond the Mouse. Beyond the Mouse, I'm sorry. Beyond the Mouse. Yeah, so Craig from Beyond the Mouse will be on um, next Tuesday, which is July 6th. So we will see you sometime after that, guys. Take care and have a safe holiday. Stay away from the baseline tap house during that holiday. Go easy on the drinks. Maybe easy. maybe stop in for a little bit. Don't light fireworks. Boy. Yeah, don't light. Do, yeah, don't Jason Pierre Paul yourself. And um, yeah, have a good week, and we'll see you soon.